Hey my nerds, welcome back. If you remember, I posted a video on essentials for driving conflict and self-requested a follow-up video. This is one of those, and we're exploring what might happen if we create a species that doesn't require sleep. Let's get on with it, shall we? Most fantasy species need to sleep. Fortunately, if you're looking for inspiration for the creation of a sleepless species, we can actually draw from real life in this one. Spiders, bullfrogs, among others, don't need to sleep. One particularly interesting creature that I want to mention that does sleep, but not in the same way that we do, is the dolphin. Dolphins only ever sleep with one hemisphere of their brain at one time. This is unihemispherical sleep, and it happens because dolphins don't breathe automatically like we do. They don't keep breathing while they're asleep, so they need to be conscious to consciously decide to breathe or they die. So while one hemisphere gets to slumber, the other remains awake and then they swap, which as an inspiration for a fantasy species is a fascinating topic to explore, especially when you consider just how different the two hemispheres of our brains are. You could create a species of people who change personality when part of their brain goes to sleep and the other part wakes up, which is just crazy to think about. Plus, they wouldn't need to hunker down and stop somewhere safe to sleep like we do. Forget shifts throughout the night where half your team is sleeping and the other half are on watch. It's just not needed anymore. Everyone can stay awake. And everyone who's attacking can also stay awake at all points in time. Which brings us on to the other important world building consequences for when we start messing with sleep. Firstly, what happens to a society of people who don't sleep? Are working days longer? Do people have more free time? Would their society advance faster? 50% more waking hours every day is a lot of books that I would be writing. Secondly, how does creativity change in a world without dreams? Many authors say their stories come to them in their sleep. While mine don't, I still experience an existence in a reality unbound by the same limitations as ours every time I dream. And it inspires me to create things that I just didn't think possible. But without this, what becomes of art? Would art only be a measurement of the skill we have in accurately capturing the reality around us, rather than an expression of creativity? Many art forms we have just wouldn't exist. Fantasy itself might not exist. Thirdly, how is memory affected? Sleep improves our memory. So would a species that doesn't sleep be slower to learn new information and skills? Fourthly, what are the healing aspects of sleep, both mental and physical? Sometimes I dream of loved ones I've lost. It's a way the body heals after grief. Shutting down after a tough day resets me and I'm able to start the next day afresh. On top of this, I have chronic back pain. Thank you, PhD. And each night my body relaxes, reducing the strain on the muscles that were stretched by spending five years down a microscope like that. And my immune system releases cytokines that help reduce the inflammation. The pain gets worse though, again, throughout the course of the day and around we go. But how much worse would it be if there was no recovery time each night when I was sleeping? Sleep produces cortisol levels in the body. Cortisol is the hormone responsible for our fight, flight or freeze response. And when people don't get enough sleep, cortisol levels just keep rising, causing all sorts of complications like increased blood pressure and heart disease. Sleepless species will either need to have evolved ways to be healthy despite this, or have evolved different behaviours to cope with their biology, or they will have to be less healthy and die younger. Picking which of those three approaches or which mixture of those three approaches you want to use for your world will have a tremendous effect on the type of story you'll create and the type of world you'll create and the type of species that you'll create. Think about a society that relies only on option two, adjusting their behavior to keep healthy. When I get migraines, I sleep through the worst of the pain, waking up recovered. Sleep is a healer. But if you couldn't sleep and you had to wait out the pain, then that would be actual torture. I would only experience it once to never want to do it again. So I would never overwork myself to the point of getting a migraine again. And therefore I've adjusted my behavior to prevent from getting to that point. So would this mean that the pace of life would just be slower for these people? We live fast with our lives because we kind of know that we have the night to recover. But if we didn't need sleep, 
Would it just be reckless to live as fast paced as we do? Would we live more slower and more consistently to reduce the physical and mental damage we're doing to ourselves? Alternatively, writers of fantasy, do you pick option one for your species that isn't sleeping? Option one has evolved different means of achieving what sleep actually does for us. By creating other biological mechanisms for things like creativity, healing, and memory reconciliation outside of sleep, you'll create a very different type of species. And then you have option three, where people are dying younger because they haven't evolved behavior or biological ways of coping with a lack of sleep. How does this affect your society? Do you have people having to procreate a lot earlier and living a lot less long than we do because their bodies just tire out sooner? Exploring the consequences of all these are just some of the ways you can enhance your world building if you choose to make a story where you have a species that doesn't sleep. So there you go, my nerds. There are plenty of ways that you can make sleep a non-essential in your story and really go to town in making a different world than what we've seen before. Have fun and see you next time. Bye.